Welcome to the MOOCs course in Organic Chemical Technology. This is introduction video of the course. What is chemical technology? Chemical technology takes into account principles of chemical engineering and applies at industrial scale to produce chemicals. These chemicals in general often used for a household purpose, societal purpose and industrial purpose. In addition, there are some chemicals which are also required for the defense purpose and many other various purposes as well. Right? However, considering the hazardous nature of many of the chemicals associated with almost all industries, it is very essential to follow the safety protocols strictly for chemical industries. Also, it is essential for them to follow pollution concerns before discharging the wastage of the chemical industries. The wastage may be in gases form or liquid form or solid form. They have to follow the uh, pollution uh, norms strictly before discharging them into the atmosphere. Then based on the nature of chemicals that have been produced, these chemicals may be uh, grouped as inorganic chemicals and then organic chemicals. This course is primarily based on inorganic chemicals that is inorganic chemical technology that means we will be applying the chemical engineering principles for the production of several types of inorganic chemicals. So, we are going to see majority of the things associated with the inorganic chemicals only. We are going to discuss production of inorganic chemicals and then associated details. The classification of chemical industry is very difficult and it is not possible to define them in a particular one particular way. However, broadly if we classify the chemical industry as follows, then what we can have? We can have five different types of chemical industries are possible. Rather classification, it is a grouping of chemical industries. So, one of the group is inorganic chemical industries such as fuel and industrial gases, individual nitrogen industries, phosphorus industries, sulfur industries, then variety of fertilizer industries, then chloralkali uh, industries, then cement and lime industries, then uh, industries associated with the production of nuclear uh, materials, explosives and propellants, etc. Other group is natural product industries where we have edible and essential oils industries, soaps and detergents industries, paints and varnishes, carbohydrates, fermentation, pulp and paper, food industry, etc. Then there are synthetic organic chemical industries such as organics preparation, pesticides, pharmaceuticals, biotechnology, etc. This can be third group. Another group is polymerization industries producing variety of polymers. Then last group is metallurgical industries such as iron and steel, aluminum, copper, lead, zinc industry, etc. There may be other industries are also like uh, glass and uh, coating industries, ceramic industries. So, but however, a broad classification has only been given here. So, our course is on inorganic chemical technology that is production of inorganic chemicals at the industry level, how to do, what are the details that is what we are going to discuss. So, most of those contents may be covered or included in this inorganic chemical industries, natural product industry and then few topics in this metallurgical industries. In addition, we may also have a, a glass industry and then we may also have a ceramic industry, right? If you look at the statistics of Indian chemical industry, if you look at the position of Indian chemical industry worldwide, you will be surprised to know that Indian chemical industry is very huge and then it ranks sixth largest in the world and third in the Asia. In terms of uh, GDP, it contributes 7 percent of India's gross domestic product that is GDP. Then in terms of a share of chemical industry in India's gross industrial output, it was only 8 percent in 1971 which grown to 45 percent in 1995. And then by early 1990s itself, India has become self-sufficient in production of many chemicals such as drugs, dye stuffs, pesticides paints, etc. However, until now India is not self-sufficient in production of uh, several chemicals like oils, 
petrol, diesel, etc., because of the lack of resources, but not because of lack of technology. Then, what happens in general in any given chemical plant? In given chemical plant, there are several steps. These steps may be grouped together. Some steps, because by the nature chemical plant, what you can understand, there are some kind of chemical changes are occurring. So, what we can have? We can have uh, things associated with the chemical changes and then things associated with the non-chemical changes occurring before the chemical changes and then things associated with the non-chemical changes occurring after the chemical changes step. That is, you know, uh, we can have a, uh, we can uh, divide chemical industries in three steps. One is the upstream processes stage where pre-processing of raw materials takes place. What do you mean by pre-processing of raw materials? In the nature, in the nature, we may get the raw materials in very crude form, and then there may be several uh, impurities associated with those raw material. So, also they may be available in a size which are not suitable to conduct proper reaction. So, for that, some kind of pre-processing is required. So, then this pre-processing, like uh, this uh, pre-processing uh, operations involve crushing, grinding, washing, filtration, drying, mixing, etc. So, here in all these processes what happens only physical or mechanical changes only occurring, there are no chemical changes occurring and these things are known as the unit operations. So, after having these uh, steps of uh, raw material processing, assume you have a purified raw material, then what you can do? You can conduct or convert processed raw materials to products by allowing them to undergo some kind of chemical reactions. So, in this step what happens? Chemical changes are occurring. So, what kind of chemical changes? Again there are a number of uh, chemical changes are possible, something like oxygenation, hydrogenation, polymerization, sulfonation, nitration, dehydration, these kind of several types of reactions are there. So, all of them we call them unit processes. Right? And also we know when there is a reaction along with the product there may be byproducts also. Also we know that rarely any reaction undergoes 100 percent conversion. So that means there may be some kind of unreacted reactants may also be there. So you may need to purify the products from the unreacted reactants as well as from the byproducts. So for that again you need to do some kind of uh, uh, processing. So, those operations or processes are known as the downstream processes with, which are called as post processing of the products where we will be doing distillation, evaporation, extraction, settling, granulation, centrifugation, etc. Again here what we have? We have only physical or mechanical changes only. There are no chemical changes. So, that is the reason these are again known as the unit operations. Whereas the unit processes, chemical changes are occurring. So, in sometimes in chemical plants, these processes undergo simultaneously also. Not essential that they undergo one after other in a sequence, or they may it's possible to they undergo simultaneously as well. So, all those things we are going to see in respective courses because this course is on production of inorganic chemicals only. There are separate courses. Uh, in uh, UG chemical engineering curriculum where we have the mechanical unit operations course, we discuss where, uh, where we study most of the unit operations. Then there are mass transfer and then heat transfer kind of courses where we discuss many other kind of unit operations as well. Then there is a chemical reaction engineering course where we may be discussing variety of the unit processes. However, we will be discussing basics of these unit operations and unit processes in the first week of the course. Now, contents. Before going into the contents, what we are going to see in this particular course briefly is nothing but production of inorganic chemicals. So, in order to produce a given inorganic chemical, what are the raw materials required? Their availability. Then, basis such as quantitative requirement 
that means let us say 1 ton of uh, inorganic chemical A if you want to produce how much raw material is, is required, what are the different types of raw material re, uh, required for the production of inorganic chemical A and then for production of uh, 1 ton of that uh, particular uh, inorganic chemical A, uh, what are the quantities of those raw materials are required. Then plant capacities etc. these things we are going to see. Then what are the reactions involved in production of those chemicals? Then what is the process to get those chemicals? So these processes are explained through flow sheets, flow sheets different types of flow sheets are there we are going to see and then description of this process also we are going to see. And then any process if you see there may be advantages, there may be disadvantages etc. there may be problems. So what are the major engineering problems? In some plants there may not be any engineering pro problems, in some plants there may be n number of problems what are they, how to handle them. Then economics, economics uh, in production of uh, those inorganic chemicals that is what we are going to see. And then this is what we are going to see from 2 to 12th week whereas in the first week we are going to see a few basics or general principles of chemical industries, what are the unit operations, what are the unit processes those things we are going to see in the first week. Whereas from 2nd to 12th week we are going to discuss production of variety of n number of inorganic chemicals. Okay. So, in detail if you see at the contents of the course what we have in the first week we have principles of chemical industries where we see a few basics about chemical industries and then introduction about unit operations and unit processes and then general principles of chemical industries. Second week we will be discussing about fuel gases production like production of uh, producer gas, water gas, coke even gas, synthesis gas natural gas etc. Third week we will be discussing production of industrial gases such as carbon dioxide, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen etc. Then fourth week we will be discussing sulphur industry where we will be discussing classification of sulphur and sulfuric acid processes, mining and manufacturing of sulphur and then production of sulfuric acid through different processes. Then fifth, sixth and seventh weeks we will be discussing in detail about different types of fertilizers because several types of uh, fertilizers are there. India is one of the top country producing in the uh, different types of fertilizers. So we have uh, production of ammonia, nitric acid, urea and ammonium nitrate, phosphorus and phosphoric acid, calcium phosphate, ammonium phosphate, nitrophosphate, sodium phosphate etc. Then potassium and potassium chloride, potassium sulphate, potassium bisulphates etc. like different types of fertilizers we are going to uh, discuss how to produce them, what are the problems associated with them, what is the economics about these fertilizers industries etc. that we are going to see in weeks 5, 6 and 7. Eighth week we are going to discuss chloralkali industries where we will be discussing about production of soda, ash, caustic soda and then chlorine. Ninth week we will be discussing uh, cement and lime industries where we will be discussing a few basics about uh, available raw materials for these industries, then production of cement, then production of lime products etc. Tenth week we will be discussing glass and surface coating and then eleventh week we will be discussing ceramic industries, twelfth week we will be discussing metallurgical industries where we will be discussing classification and manufacture of pig iron, sponge iron steel, aluminum, copper and lead, zinc, alloys and their composition etc. These, these kind of thing we are going to study in the 12th week. Then about the evaluation every week we will be having an assignment and then all these assignment would be uh, computer based assignments. Then final examination at the end of the semester would also be online based computer based uh, examination as per the NPTEL uh, requirements. Okay. References, majority of the contents would be prepared from this uh, reference book CL Dryden Outlines of Chemical Technology revised by Gopal Rao and Marshall third edition, another book Austin and Shreve Chemical Process Industries fifth editions, other two books that is Encyclopedia of Chemical Technology by Kirk and Atmar 
and then unit processes in organic synthesis by Grogins or references. Right? So, primarily if you have this book or uh, this book or both, it is going to be very helpful for your coursework. Thank you. Thank you.